Hi, this is Malcolm Tibbetts. Over the last eight or nine years, I've produced eight two-hour DVDs, instructional DVDs on segmented wood turning. But I've never included this technique. I thought this would be a good time to do that. What I have in front of me are endless loops forming spheres. This one is made out of triangles. It's comprised of three donuts cut apart, put back together. This one is made up of pentagon style or shaped rings. Five donuts uh, cut apart, put back together. For this video, I'm gonna take it up one notch and I'm gonna attempt to do something along these lines but with seven-sided rings uh, using seven donuts to make an endless tube that forms a sphere. Follow along if you're into this kind of stuff. I hope you uh, enjoy this. I'm going to use ambrosia maple for this project. Got some nice boards here. I've cut strips two inches wide and milled them down to 0.6 inches thick and 0.3 inches thick. I was able to split uh, boards into two pieces to get those thin pieces. Using my miter saw, I can gang cut three or four of these at a time. I'm going to harvest a bunch of segments, tall segments, and then uh, clean them up, go to my glue table, and glue together a whole lot of cylinders, tall segmented rings, if you will. About seven rubber bands around this, uh, these two inch bands. That'll provide plenty of uh, pressure. These cuts have got to be perfect. There's no half ring business going on here. They have to be very accurate cuts. Now, once the glue's dried, you know, a few hours later, uh, go to my disc sander, put a fairly smooth end on these. And here's where it gets a little different. The thick pieces, the thick cylinders, I'm going to recut those so that I can create a, uh, a brick lay, if you will. Uh, this is the only way I could get a seven-sided tube and still have a brick lay. After the bandsaw work, it's over to the disc sander. These need to be cleaned up. I'll go right down to the pencil line, actually erase most of the pencil line, and get seven-sided uh, cylinders with the seams in the middle of, the, uh, of each side. So now I have about 250 rings, 125 of each style. But going to the bandsaw with this plug that's been glued to this piece of MDF, I can safely split these rings into three smaller rings each. Uh, this is pretty quick work uh, and, uh, and fairly safe to do it this way. The rings that came out of the center have uh, bandsaw cuts on both sides. I'm touching up one side just to give me a semi-smooth surface. A little compressed air and I've got over 700 of these rings ready for the next uh, phase of my project. So what's the next step? Well, it's to create tapered rings. I'm going to do that by using these melamine trays. They're two and a half inches wide, the same as my rings. I'm putting strips of uh, MDF on here and uh, I'll run these through the sander so they're consistent thickness about 0.0607. Uh, it's not that critical for this first pass. Once I've got the uh, shims uh, dialed in, I'll use some double-sided tape. I'll put thin strips, uh, put a thick piece on there and rip it with a utility uh, blade. I'll put uh, two quarter-inch wide strips on each one of these boards and then uh, proceed to mount my my rings. Uh, that's why I needed a smooth surface. So I'll mount all my rings, uh, half of each, uh, on these boards, go to the drum sander, make uh, several passes with 36 grit paper. I'm just hogging wood off here. And then uh, I'll switch to 120 grit, make a couple passes with 120, take them off the boards. Uh, but before I take them off the boards, it's important to mark them so I can keep them oriented the same way. So I've completed tapering one side of all my rings and I've put a second shim on the uh, trays, a shim that hopefully will be exactly the right thickness. How do you figure out the, the last uh, shim? That's the most critical. That's the one that will really determine 
how these rings stack together into what size donut, what, what um, you know, radius they form and so forth. So let me walk you through the calculations. It's just simple arithmetic. So I'm gonna shoot for a 20 inch diameter donut. That's the OD. I'll multiply times pi. I'll get a circumference of 62 plus. I'll divide by 128. That's the number of rings. And I'll get a ring thickness of 0.49. Next, I need to calculate the inside thickness of my rings. Well, I need to know the inside diameter, the ID. My rings are two and a half inches, so that would be 20 inches less five inches. 15 inch ID, and then the same math uh, gives me the inside thickness of my rings, which would be 0.368. Subtracting the inside thickness from the outside thickness gives me a difference of 0.122. This equals the thickness of the shim on the second side. The first side I, that I tapered, I started off with about a 0.06 something. The first side is not as critical. The second side, I need to be dead on. So I'm going to do a test run. I've uh, taken this tray and I've sanded the shim down to a difference between this side and that side of approximately uh, 0.122. I'm going to mount a few uh, rings, run them through the sander, and then measure those differences in thickness. So I've stacked together the four test pieces. I'm going to measure this outside thickness. And there I get 2.28. The inside, these points, measure that, and I get 1.73. If I do the math here, I've got a difference of 0.55. If I divide that by 4, so I get a difference of 0.137. I want a difference of 0.122. So to get closer to that, I'm going to take just a lot of little shaving off that shim and uh, mount all my rings and proceed. So some final dimensioning of the shims for the second side passes. Get the uh, rings all dusted off, uh, ready to mount. And now I've got my 128 plus a few extra uh, rings ready to go for their second side. Removing the rings requires a, a little caution. Uh, you can see why I only use thin quarter inch wide strips of tape. If I'd used a lot of tape, uh, they'd be difficult to remove and I'd probably end up breaking quite a few. So prior to gluing, I want these rings to be clean. The gluing is a step-by-step -step process. I'll glue pairs together, you know, three spring clamps will uh, provide plenty of pressure. I'll do a whole bunch of pairs and then put pairs together into groups of four and groups of four into group of eight and so forth. It's my habit in between glue steps I'll touch these rings just lightly to the disc sander just to make sure there's no debris or glue squeeze out uh, to mess up the next glue line. It's also my habit to do frequent dry fits. Here I've put a group of uh, sections of four together and I want to see if they form 90 degrees. Uh, and they come very, very close. I'm certainly in range. I'm good to proceed. If they didn't, then I could do some minor uh, disc sander adjustments. With things looking good, it's just a matter of a lot of gluing, uh, using rubber bands and different uh, configurations, getting creative with rubber bands. Uh, get down to this many, I think I've got eight pieces here. I'll do a dry fit just to confirm things and then I'll proceed to glue those together in pairs again. By stretching rubber bands to the inside of these curves, making the insides more slack, you can even use rubber bands on shapes like that. Now I'm down to the half pieces. 
the hose clamps only act as an anchor for my rubber bands that are going perpendicular across the seams. Next, now well, let's put these halves together. I've got a spacer in there of green veneer, 1 16th inch thick. Uh, that'll be where I cut these back apart. To turn the donuts, I need a jam chuck, something that will fit the outside of those donuts quite snugly. I'm turning some MDF there. I'm uh, doing a little bit of disc sander work to improve the roundness of my donut, uh, trying to get a good fit in this jam chuck. With this orientation, I've got access to three sides, three of the seven sides. I'll turn, uh, do a little bit of shear scraping, and then I'll sand those three sides before I remove it from the chuck, the jam chuck, and reverse it to get the three other sides. That'll leave just the outside surface. So for this first donut, it's all done except for that outside surface. I'll need to make another type of jam chuck for that. This fits the inside of my donuts quite snugly, but I'll also put a couple of little keeper plates on there to you know, give it a little more uh, security. Uh, some turning, some sanding. So now I've got the largest of seven donuts complete. I'll uh, clean it uh, with a tack cloth. I'll put the first of probably three coats of sanding sealer. In between coats, I always buff with a 320 sanding mop. Now it's uh, time to cut this apart. Then I'll go to my disc sander, touch it up a little bit, and then uh, put some pencil marks on there and manually swipe it back and forth on some 80 grip paper. When the pencil marks all disappear easily, I know I've got a very, very flat surface. I was shooting for 20 inches, but it doesn't really matter at this point. It came out at 19 and a half. So I've drawn this circle. And now I've adjusted my divider until I can go around this circle 14 times and make 14 equally spaced divisions. So here's the profile of that first donut, my largest one of the seven that I need. Using those uh, division markers, I've laid out the rest of my donuts. This probably doesn't make much sense. It's very confusing. The red lines represent uh, the top half of these seven different donuts. The green lines represent the lower half. This will make sense once I make those donuts and lay them on this plan. Well, through the magic of video, here's the other six donuts. There's uh, three different pairs, actually. And here are all seven donuts cut apart into 14 halves. I'll lay these on my plan just to give you an idea of what the upper half of this spherical shape is going to look like. And here's the other halves. Now they're right side up now, but they'll go upside down and connect to the halves that are on my plan. Notice how these four half donuts, or actually full donuts, have a corner or a point facing outward. And then the other three have a flat side uh, pointing outward. It's really important that you don't screw that up. Next, I'm going to tape it all together using Gorilla Tape. This will give me a look. There's several ways of putting this together. I've chosen this configuration. The tape uh, is going to get next replaced with a combination of hose clamps, little S-hooks, and rubber bands. The uh, wood is protected by a little strip of uh, foam. Uh, this is a pretty effective way to uh, clamp these joints together. Here I've started the assembly. Uh, this particular joint here was kind of tough to clamp. I just used my hands. Uh, after applying the glue, used hand pressure, holding it together for a couple minutes, set it aside and let the glue cure. Your hands are wonderful clamps. Now I've done the next four uh, connections. I've done a total of eight now, and I'm taking advantage of uh, the opportunity to clean these all up before I proceed. A little double-sided tape uh, holding the different uh, various grits of sandpaper allow me to get inside this uh, tight corner. I've completed the four tight corners. Those are probably the toughest ones to do. They've been sanded, 
and they've had three coats of sandy sealer applied. Now I'm going to put it back together using the hose clamps and S-hooks and rubber bands and I've used quite a bit of blocking material to help support it as I put it back together. So I have six more connections to glue together. Three on opposite sides of each other. I'll do two on opposite sides leaving uh, the last two opposite each other to do last. By doing it this way I should be able to take this back apart and have easy access to clean up the inside, uh, sand it, uh, and even put finish on everything except for those last two glue joints. So these two on the right are glued and as are the opposite ones and then the one on the left is not glued nor is the one on the opposite side of it. So now I can take this apart. Uh, that glue's been uh, curing now for a few hours. Uh, this will allow me to take this completely apart into two pieces and have access to all those glue seams on the inside. It'll be a lot easier to clean this up when it's in two separate pieces. Some sanding, and of course there's always those areas that uh, the power sander can't reach. I'm going to do a little bit of hand sanding. And then I'll go back to my sanding sealer. Eventually have three coats on there buffed in between coats. Before putting it back together, I'll apply a final finish coat and I'll buff that uh, as well inside and out before putting it together. I'll still have those last two seams to uh, apply finish to. Okay, with the inside all cleaned up, I can put this back together. I'll clamp both sides, both end pieces, confirm the fit and everything before I start to glue. I'll do these one at a time, waiting for about an hour in between glue jobs. The very last one, uh, it's surprising. Uh, the assembly is pretty stiff. I can uh, pry it open to get glue in there on that last uh, seam. I'm getting close to the end of this project. I've got to clean up these last two glue seams. Uh, the inside surfaces are kind of a pain. And then I've got to mount it. Uh, I'm drilling a one inch hole here and now I'm turning a matching plug. Drilling a quarter inch hole into the plug, cutting a piece of steel rod this is how I'll mount this on a block of granite. Uh, using some epoxy, I'll put my plug in place, put the rod in place, put it on the granite, make sure it's uh, you know not leaning off to the side or anything, that it stands uh, you know nice and straight, and let that uh, cure for a few hours. Well, there's one more thing to do. I usually burn my name and uh, put the date. Uh, I've got to put some finish on top of that. And uh, you may have noticed this one little piece of pink ivory. That's kind of become a sort of a trademark of mine. I slip a piece of pink ivory into my work whenever I can. It's just kind of a cute thing that I do. I've set up my photo booth, I've taken a few pictures, and here's a little video of it turning on a turntable. Fun project. Uh, if you try something like this, you may want to attempt something a little simpler first, maybe one you know, using triangles. You could even turn this shape uh, by turning donuts out of solid pieces of wood and put it together. And if you want a really big challenge, try something like this. This is over seven feet in diameter. It's a five-sided endless tube, which was part of a big project I call uh, a wood turner's dream. There's a video here on YouTube. Until next time, have fun and be safe.